Testing, testing, one, two, three. Testing, testing. Okay. Hello. All right, <clears throat> I think I am online and streaming. I do not hear myself when I pull it up on my phone. So I guess I will have to wait till I have another viewer to ask if you can hear me. Um, <clears throat> today I'm gonna look at this issue which is a bug in Turbo. And it's specifically a bug in Turbo 8. It did not happen in Turbo 7. And it has to do with the history, so being able to hit the back button um, when you're navigating between Turbo frames or specifically in a turbo frame, when you navigate to a different page, and then you want to go back. So this was submitted back in April. Um, there's a few people interested. Um, and I've looked into it a little bit. I was able to reproduce it with a pretty minimal example. And it appears that it has to do with the tags in the head. If there's something with a ter data turbo track reload attribute, and then in the page that you're going to, you do not have that in your head, that's when you see the issue. So I mentioned down here uh, that this issue started around this commit. So I wanted to take a quick look at this commit. Uh, this is the start of a change in Turbo 8. Um, where it says Turbo expects full HTML documents in response to requests, which kind of hints at the issue because part of the full response would be the head. And generally, you'd probably have the same script tags in your head of your page. Um, but it's interesting. In Ruby on Rails, which is the canonical example of using turbo this bug exists which is why a lot of people are seeing it um, and it exists because the turbo rails layout does not include some of the elements that are in the general application layout in ruby or in rails so this guy has pointed out that th there's a workaround the workaround is you can create this file in your Rails app, and you can put these two tags in there, which matches what's in a boilerplate Rails application layout. Once you do that, um, the back button works. But as he points out, this is, this is kind of a temporary workaround. And it would be nice to see if we could fix the actual issue. Um, I'm going to adjust my thermostat. Be right back. I am in the East Valley of Phoenix, Arizona, and it is a little warm in the middle of June. So I'm gonna crank up the air a little bit. Um, all right, so 
I have done a little bit of work trying to reproduce this, as I mentioned. Um, and I've done it in a Rails app. I've done it inside of the Turbo project itself. There is quite a bit of integration tests on um, inside the Turbo project. So I was thinking one step that I might try to take is to set up a test to reproduce this issue. Um, and specifically, I was noticing in this change that on all these test fixtures, wherever we had an example of a turbo frame without the full HTML document, it got replaced with the full HTML document and that turbo frame, which kind of reflects that change in expectation that was mentioned at the top of this commit. Um, so part of me is like, well, should we have an example of just a turbo frame? Or maybe I should have an example that has the full HTML document, but just doesn't have one of these script tags, uh, because that would reproduce it as well. Um, I think I'm going to do that because that would clo more closely reflect at least what it indicates up here as the intent is to have the entire HTML, outer HTML available. And even in Rails, there is a full HTML document. It's just missing certain tags in the header. So. Let me see if I can find a good example. I was using this hello example. Um, let me see if that's a good one. So the turbo integration tests get loaded under this localhost 9000. Um, and let me see, there's a frames hello. Navigate hello and then back. So the interesting thing too is this only happens when you use advance. Because for example, when I hit navigate hello, the the URL doesn't change. So back actually takes me to the previous URL that I was on, not to this spot um, because there's no advance. So I need to find something where there's an advance. Um, and let me actually make sure I'm on the current commit because I was playing around with different commits. Let's go to main. Let's make sure I'm on latest and greatest. Um, and let me do a build. All right. So let me find, there's a lot of examples of advance. You can see I was searching for that before. Um, this one with the three and two is interesting. I wonder if there's like a chain of links, two to three. Um, yeah, this is interesting, a tab. The scenario they were talking about primarily was pagination, I think. This was a live search, I guess, in the initial request, but this guy was talking about pagination. But tab interfaces is another common use case for turbo frames. So let me see if this example will be a good one. Fixtures, frames, fixtures, tabs. Tab one, tab two, tab three. Okay, so this is an example where you know you you have it. You're in tab one. You click tab two. It replaces the frame and advances your URL. 
and then tab three, and you can go back to tab two and tab one and forward. So this is good. Um, so what I may do, just so I don't interfere with other tests, I may just add a tab four. And copy what's in tab three. Uh, let's see. Tabs. Four. And just take out this script tag um, at the top just to show the issue. If I refresh, hit tab four. Oh, it says three. It should say four. And this should also have four. Let me hit back. Refresh. Okay. Tab four. I click it. It says four. It says four up here, but if I hit back, there's the issue. We're still on four. When I go to three and hit back, it goes back to where I was. So if I'm on one, two, three, I can go back to two and one. And, you know, I'm looking at all this. These have all three. These have all three. And I'm thinking I'm going to change my mind and not have a four. I'm just going to make this change on three and see what tests are using that, I think. If I get rid of this. One, two, three, back. Yep, it worked. So two and one work. But three does not go back. One to three. No, it's hanging. Try a refresh. Something's going on with the server. Test server. Hmm. Not sure what's going on with that. It may be something with what I changed. Yeah, page is unresponsive. Exit page. Okay. One to two works. One to three back does not work. Okay. So let, let me take a look at what uses 3.html. Um, frame navigation tests. Well, that makes sense. I wonder if there's a test actually for the back button, because that would be convenient. Um, back. Page that go back. Navigation tests. I need one with an advance and then a back. I don't want callback, so I just want go back. Do to do to do, do frame tests. These might be good. Oh yeah, here we go. This is using the three. So this is Clicking on tab three. Yeah, prompt promoted frame navigations are cached. And then it goes back and makes sure that it's back on two. Yeah, this looks pretty good. So let me see if I can run this test. Um, if I undo my change, it should pass. Uh, Run test. Let's 
see if that runs just my test. Error while running tests. Could not resolve. Idiomorph. Do I need to do an npm install? I probably did roll back and maybe I don't, I didn't have idiomorph because idiomorph is a new thing. I think. Okay, added three packages. So yeah, that probably was it. Let's see if this passes now. All tests pass. But it ran all the tests. I guess it's only four seconds, so that's fine. Let me try taking that out and running these tests again. Oh, no tests found. That's interesting. How was I getting it to run tests before? Ah, uh, this is from a different project. That is in the package JSON. We have test. Playwright test. I wonder if that's it. Playwright. Well, I guess one question is, is this a browser test or a unit test that I'm looking at? It says functional, and it looks like it's interacting with the browser and Playwright. So I'm gonna say it's a browser test. Um, so that's gonna run Playwright test. Can I put the name of the test there? No, Playwright, alrighty. What if I do npm run test browser? No tests found. All right, I'm gonna look up how to run a playwright individual test. Command line, run a single test with a title, ah, dash G, dash G, no test found. Promoted frame navigations are cached. That is the name of my test. Uh, this is not putting my dash G in, is it? Um, if I do this, uh, let's see what's in this folder. That does not look helpful. I'm trying to figure out how to run Playwright. I guess I could install it globally. Npm i dash play right what version of play right are we dealing with 1.28.0 see if that matters 
Okay, so then if I do playwright test, and oh, npx playwright probably means I don't have to install it. npx playwright test dash g. Here we go. The Chrome version and the Firefox version. Wow, it's taken a while. It definitely found the right file and the right line. Okay, it failed. It took 30 seconds to fail. Um, but I think if I were to bring this back and rerun it, they passed. Yeah. So this is definitely reproducing the issue. Um, and it's dying on read array. Ah, it's dying right after go back, which makes sense. So this go back, I believe, is just a playwright hit the back button kind of thing. Um, so I have a test that reproduces the issue. I don't understand why I would necessarily need this script tag to be on the page. Because when I'm on this page, I have the script right here. And so if I hit tabs three, what the network tab does, let me go back here and hit tab three. It loads that entire file. And it just reads out what's inside this frame and replaces this piece with that. At least that's my understanding. So if I were to remove this, I don't think that it should be affected. So if I hit three, It's still able to load this page and it's still able to grab this content and stick it in. But then when I hit back, well, now it worked. Let me see. If I try again, tab three, back there. It is not able to restore um, tabs at HTML which is the one that has one, three, back, nope. So let me commit this. Um, don't understand why I need a yarn lock change. A three HTML, yes, this is what I, I ran. I don't understand why I need that file. Um, all right, I'm in the main branch. I need to do a new branch. So this is issue one, two, oops, one, two, four, one. Issue one, two, four, one. And let's say reproduce issue by removing Script tag on target page. All right. Now I'm going to try to see if I can get it to pass the test. So now I'm going to have to dive into the implementation of what changed here that broke this. So I know that it mentioned 
fetch response. So prior to this commit, the frame controller compensated for missing pieces of an HTML doc document by taking an HTML snapshot of the current page through the HTML elements outer HTML. This commit changes the fetch response loaded callback to read the response to HTML directly from the fetch response, since that will be a fully formed HTML document. Okay, fetch response loaded. Fetch response loaded. So it does, it used to take frame.ownerdocument.documenthtml.outerhtml and now it just takes await fetch response dot response html. So I'm curious if I were to just restore this, uh, whether that would solve the problem. Not that that would be the solution, but I'm just curious. So this is inside of frame controller. Pull that up, frame controller. This is going to be line around 360. Okay, so instead of that, we're going to do this. See what happens. If I run the test again. does not look like that's going to work. Let's see if it works in my test. Three and back. Nope, that didn't work. All right, so that is not the answer. I'm going to instead now set a debugger tag or say, add a debugger statement so that I can pop into a debugger. Which means I have to rebuild. So let's do that. Oh, you know what? That's why I didn't change anything. I didn't rebuild. Let me try that again. Paste. NPM on build. Ah, NPM. Okay, now does it make any difference if I hit tab three and back? Aha! So that works. <laughs> tab three, back, and I bet you my test will work. So that was the breaking change. Interesting. So let me put a debugger here and just see if I can understand what's going on. Uh, we have to run build and then I I use the debugger because I, it's often hard for me to find these, this code in the browser. Although in this case, it looks like it's not all that difficult, maybe. Fetch response loaded. <laughs> Still having trouble finding it. So let me just hit this. Okay. So if I move this debugger out now that I've found it and rebuild. If I hit tab three, all right. Pur 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 propose visit if navigated with action. So let's take a look at the difference. So if I look at the response to HTML, In the working version, this is what it looks like. Just drop that into a file. Uh, I'm going to make that look nicer. Format, yeah. So 
This is the working HTML. And then if I do the change and well, can I just run that directly in here? Let's see. No, debugger won't let me do that. Okay, so I will rebuild and refresh. Tab three, okay. Now I will run over that line and grab that response HTML and we'll set up the broken one. Broken HTML. And you can see right off the bat, it's quite different. The broken HTML is a lot smaller. The working HTML has a lot more to it. And I, I guess it's pretty obvious that the difference is the broken HTML is the HTML that came from the request, which doesn't have that extra script tag that we were talking about. Whereas this HTML is the original page um, but it's not the original page. It's actually the modified page, but it's the full HTML of that page, including that script tag. So let's see if I can understand why we made this change. Okay, fetch response loaded. Change the fetch response loaded callback to read the response station now directly from the fetch response. Why? After the change made in Turbo and changes made in Turbo Rails, the canonical server side implementation, Turbo expects full HTML documents. Okay. Prior to this commit, the frame controller compensated for missing pieces by taking a snapshot. This commit changes the fetch response loaded callback to read the response HTML directly from the fetch response, since that would be a fully formed HTML. The frame controller compensated for missing pieces of an HTML document. It's kind of what we're dealing with, right? We have missing pieces of the HTML document. So what is it doing with this response HTML? It is putting it inside this response object, which is stuck inside this options object. And then there's a session.visit call passing that options. What does session.visit do? Session.visit takes and does a propose visit Actually, let's walk through it in real time. Sources. So if we step over, 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 and then into um, session that visit into that. Now, which of these ifs is it going to hit? It's going to hit this one. All right. So the options is is used, which makes sense because we have a change to what options had in it, specifically the response response HTML. Um, so if I step into, I don't need to step into navigate. I need to step into propose visit. 
If delegate allows visiting location with action, okay, visit proposed to location. Step into extend URL with deprecated properties. Okay, this dot adapter dot visit proposed to location. I think I lost my debugger. Restart here. Do do. All right, step into visit proposed to location. Where is it going to use that HTML? This that navigator dot start visit. Passed in the options. Okay. Step into that. Yeah, I know about the navigator. Start visit. Current visit. And then current visit dot start. So current visit will have the options, including the response with the response to HTML. And then it's going to call start. Visit started and delegate visit started. Aha, visit that load cache snapshot. I wonder what that is. Get cache snapshot. Get cache snapshot for location. Okay, so that's looking at a cache based on the URL. Okay, that makes sense. Or get preloaded snapshot. This that snapshot HTML doesn't have that. So we don't have a snapshot right now. So it's not going to return anything. So this is going to be undefined. Okay. Issue request. Has preloaded response. This that simulate request. Step into. Okay, interesting. And then go to same page anchor and then we're done. So I'm gonna let that run and then I actually wanna hit the back button and see if I hit a break point. I don't. Where, I wonder where in here does the back button um, come into this back. Is it? Two. Back. Nothing. interesting that I don't know if there's JavaScript being run here. I kind of wonder whether the the uh, browser is handling this for us. 
Oh, I did have someone come in asking about Java. Um, this is JavaScript, sort of like Java. <laughs> Not really, but this is the closest to Java I get. Uh, I do see a restore here. Is this? Aha. So restore is what's happening when we're trying to go back and forth. So if I go to three, and I let that run, And then I hit back. I am hitting here on the restore, start visit. It's got a location. It, the location is the right path. That's tabs, so that's tab one. And restoration identifier. Um, I wonder what that is. So if I start visit here, what happens? Step into so calls this dot stop current visit equals new visit with the restoration identifier. Current visit dot start step into visit started. All right, we have an adapter and we have a delegate. Not sure which one is the most relevant, but let's just walk into the adapters visit started. Visit dot load cached snapshot. Get cache snapshot. We were here earlier. Um, do we have a snapshot? We do. Um, we are on a restore, so yeah, it's going to return the snapshot. Is preview is false. I think we might be hitting this is page refresh. And the reason I'm thinking that is because if you look at the original tabs page, this is data turbo track reload. I think what that means is if you go to the documentation on Turbo, uh, data turbo track reload, reloading when assets change. So if CSS or JavaScript changed, that merge would evaluate on top of the existing one. Typically, this would lead to undesirable conflicts. In such cases, it is necessary to fetch a completely new document through a standard non-AJAX request. So this is my theory, is that when we hit back, it's comparing what's in the head of our previous page and what's in the head of the page we're trying to go to. And it's seeing, oh, if anything changed, we need to reload. It doesn't quite fit the behavior that we're seeing though, so maybe maybe I'm wrong. Let's see. If I go into render, that is an async cache snapshot. Um, I'm going to run through this, see what happens. It is going to same page, and it is saying this page, or no, it is the same page true. So it's not going to hit any of this stuff. Is it rendered? Is same page is true. What does this same page mean? Let's see if we can find that. Is same page. Looks like it's part of the visit.html or visit.js rather. This.delegate location with action is same page. This location and this action. 
that function will do what? It will compare the request URL Okay. Make sure it's the same as the last rendered location. So this feels like a back scenario. We're replacing, we're not replacing, we are restoring. And the URL that we're trying to go to is the last place we were at. That makes sense, okay. So if we go in here, visit rendered, Step into that. Uh, that does nothing. Interesting. Okay, so I want to see what happens when it works. If I go here and I run through and then I hit tab two, and I run through, then I hit back. What does it look like? We have an identifier, we have location. Um, let me step into that. Step into create a current visit, and we start the current visit. All right, we need to go into the adapter. Let's load the cache snapshot. We do have a snapshot sense. Then we're going to get into here. This same page is false. Oh, interesting. So it's actually going to drop down here. So I was wrong. This same is same page must be different than what I thought. I guess same page would mean that we're refreshing. In fact, yeah, is page refresh is the other case. So I think that's the problem. I think for some reason um, we're drop we're not dropping into this part of the code, so it's not able to actually render the snapshot like it does in this case. Let me take some of these off here. Uh, I do want that one, but that I think is where the problem is happening. If I hit back, and then I hit this, this same page is false. If I hit this, and I hit back, this same page is true. Yeah, I'm gonna say that's probably it. So let's figure out what's going on with this is same page. Uh, is same page. So if I drop into that, okay, is same page must be set already. Yeah, set on line 86. So if I come up here, set right here. When does that get set? You reset. Go ahead, run. Tab three. Uh oh, am I frozen again? All right, here we go. Debugger. All right, that's running this same page and it's false. Okay. Then when I hit back, and Go into this. Uh, 
And it's looking at the anchor, which are both undefined. Okay. Is restoration to top? Action is restore. Type of anchor is undefined. Okay. All right, let me see here. This is restoration to top is true in this case. And I'm curious if that's true in the working case. Go back here and do the working case. Tab two. And back is restoration to top is true okay so that's not it um let's take a look at okay anchor and current anchor are undefined action is restore what about these locations you've got get request url location and we have get request URL this dot view dot last rendered location. So last rendered location is two. Okay. So they're not the same. That's why it is false when it says this is the same page. Okay. But when I go to three and I hit back, what is my request for a location? Tabs, that's where I'm going. Okay. What is my last rendered location? Also tabs. Ah. Interesting. Okay, so the difference seems to be what's in this this dot view dot last rendered location. Let's take a look at that. Where does that come from? Last rendered location session. Page became interactive and view rendered snapshot. Are the two spots where that can happen? So let me find those in here. Page became interactive. I'll set a breakpoint there. And view rendered snapshot. Okay. Let's take a look at when that is set. I'm going to take this breakpoint off. Okay. Go back to the working state. Uh, I don't care what's going on right now. I just want to see when I click on tab two. It is setting last rendered location to tab two, okay, using view rendered snapshot. And it's calling it again, tab two, view rendered snapshot. Okay. And so then when I hit back, everything works. And then it sets it to tabs, okay, view rendered snapshot. Then if I hit tab three, it does not call view rendered snapshot. Interesting. That, that seems to be the problem. It's never marking the last rendered location as three. 
All right, so let's look at what calls view render snapshot. Da -da -da -da. Session. That's where it's declared. And then it's called in render. Okay, so it's called in render. If should render. Let's search for this code. And let's see, let me start up here. And we will reset. Don't need these breakpoints anymore. I do need that one. I don't need that one. Okay. So if I hit tab three, it does jump in here. It does say it should render. And then it does get here, view rendered snapshot. Interesting. Uh, step into. Step into. View rendered snapshot is empty. Interesting. I'm in the frame view. Okay, and then it comes back to should render, but it's false. Okay, so in the working case, you just confirm. If I hit tab two, It crashes. <laughs> oh, why is this crashing? Refresh. Stop. Refresh. Click. Enter. Nope. Oh, snap. There we go. All right. I click tab two. I can't click tab two. They're still loading. Do 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 do. do. Stop. Hmm, do I need to restart my server? Stop, start. Stop, refresh. Well, I don't know if I've even still have the script. Anyway, so I'm going to close that tab entirely and we will try again. Let me find that. Oh, it's still got my breakpoint. Nice. All right. So in the working case, when I go to tab two and I view rendered snapshot, it's also this one. Okay. That's not any different. But then it comes back here again. Into and now it's got the right one. Now we're in P2. 
page snapshot or this that is session. So page view has a delegate of session. Frame view as a delegate of frame controller. Page view has a delegate of session. Interesting. Page view delegate session. Okay. When I go to three, I've got frame view with a delegate of frame controller. And that's it. There's no page view with a delegate of session. Interesting. All right, let's walk up the chain. When is it going to have a page view? In the call stack, we are coming from render page, render change, render page snapshot. And render load cache snapshot. So where does it break? Let's see. Um, are we getting to render page? Tab three. This is the frame view. This is in render page. We do have a delegate of session. Should render is false. Interesting. So that's why it skips it. So it should render is false. When we're here, and we get to the page view, should render is true. Now, should render comes from renderer. Doesn't it? Should render equals renderer. Oh, it's this little thing. True. So what is making that false? So we're gonna have to walk back up. Um, renderer, renderer should render. We have to go here, take a look at tab three. Here's the frame view, and then here's the page view. Uh, let's see if I, I know this is gonna be a false. So how does it become false? snapshot step into okay should render return this that new snapshot is visible and this that tracked elements are identical interesting I bet you this is it let's take a look false true False. I'm going to be stuck again. All right, when I go to tab two,
subtract elements are identical is true. Yep. But so when I'm navigating between two and one, this is uh, I add a watch. Watch, watch, watch. True. True, true, true. But when I go to three, false. False. Back to one, true, 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 true. Two, true, true, true. And three is false. All right, looks pretty clear, which kind of makes sense. Tracked elements are identical, probably is looking at this stuff, seeing if they're identical. So it looks like this is by design to some extent, at least this part. Um, yep, this current head snapshot tracked element signature is equal to this that new head snapshot tracked element signature. Yep. All right. So For some reason, the page view will only render if the tracked elements are identical. I guess that's the design. But that means that the rendered URL is not set. So I'm curious if I were to let's see view rendered snapshot this dot view dot last rendered location. What if I were to add that right here inside the frame controller view delegate? And then I rebuild. And I refresh, and my page seems to have died again. Tab.html. All right, let's see what happens now. Um, if I click tab two, I go back to one. Oh, nope, I can't. I broke it. <laughs> uh, that's not good. One, two, back, broken. One, three, back, broken. Okay, so that didn't work. Was I getting errors or something? Ah. Can I read properties of undefined reading location? Okay, so obviously that code's not going to work. This dot location, maybe? Let me just set it. Find this in the source if I can. We rendered snapshot. Actually, I can just tell it to pause on uncaught exceptions. All right, so I don't have a location on a history. This dot view. Where would I get a location? Element.
This time view, definitely a thing. Although, is this a thing? Plastered location? Not defined. So is this view a different view? View delegate. So the session has a view. The frame has a view, but are they the same view? Step view is new frame view. View equals new page view. No, totally different. Well, that's not going to work. <laughs> All right. I don't think dealing with the frame controller is going to help because I'm, the way I'm seeing this, the session and the history and the page viewing, which is what's handling the back and forward button of the browser, is all handling is all here and it's the full page context it's not the frame context which is what the frame controller is dealing with and so i think when you advance the frame it's supposed to kind of promote or propose that visit all the way up to the page but because we have this difference in the headers it is not uh rendering the full page the way it normally would um so we are not hitting that line now i wonder if there's another thing we can do in the session in the render where was the render just uh render It was whatever called um, you rendered snapshot. It's right here, should render. You rendered snapshot. I wonder if we could introduce another method. That all it did is set the last rendered location. And if we were to, to run that on the page view, even if should render is false, like maybe an impulse down here, I wonder if that would help. I want to find out whether should invalidate is true let's see if that is true um you set a breakpoint here and uh actually i need to make it no longer broken so i broke it inside of frame controller so i'm gonna undo that change i'm going to build and i'm going to refresh all right, so now if I hit this, in the frame view, I should render yes. In the page view, I should render no. Should invalidate is also false. So I would drop down into this else. And I do have a delegate. Um, my delegate is my session, I believe. View rendered snapshot. Yeah, that's what I'm running. And I don't know if I want to notify the application, but I certainly want to do this. So if I make a method called set last rendered location, and I take the location. 
I don't actually need the location. And I call that instead of this. And then if I call that down here, this dot delegate. I don't need that. I just need to call it. What would that do? Let's do build. Uh, all right, I need to go to tab.html, tab two. I don't want breakpoints right now. I just want to see if it's working. Two. Uh oh. Why does it say it's loading? Two. Back. Okay, I broke it again. <laughs> um, do I have an error? Yes, I do. Set last one your location is not defined. Okay, that's probably on the frame. Because the frame had the empty uh view rendered snapshots so we'd probably need an empty version of this one yeah let me see if that helps go back to tabs let's clear out our errors build refresh tab two Still got a problem. Set rest last render location is not defined. Where are we hitting that? Oh, I need to say this dot, don't I? Yeah. This dot set last render location. Okay. Let's build it again. Back, refresh, tab two, back. Tab one, two, back, tab one, nice. Tab three, and it is hitting our new line. And if I let it play, and I hit back, oh, I went back to one, three, one, three, one. <laughs> Got it working. All right, I don't know if this is gonna be a good change. But this definitely solves the problem. Three, two, three, two, three, two, three, two, Oh, that's odd. Getting frozen again. All right. Three, two, one, two, three. One, two, three, two, three, two, one. Two, one, two, one, three. So I am seeing a problem. <laughs> For some reason, after navigating around, it starts slowing down like crazy. Three, one, three. Click on two, and then it's just like, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> and it becomes un un unresponsive. I wonder if that issue
existed already or did I introduce that? Let me commit what I have and we will see if we can roll back and reproduce it. Set last rendered location. All right, so if I, actually, let me run the test real quick. Yep, test passed. Uh, I don't want you, I just want all of you. Fix by setting last rendered location. Oh, wait, even if, um, it's even if the render, the should render is false because the renderer determined that What was it called? There's a tracked elements are identical. Yes. Even if tracked elements are identical, it's false. Commit. All right, let me roll back to main, get check out main, and build. And let me just click around for a little while. Three, two, one, back. Two, three, one, back. Two. Yeah. <laughs> Three, I think this is an existing issue. It's not a good one. <laughs> we may need to log another issue, but yeah. <laughs> this page becomes unresponsive. That is not good. Okay. Aw, oh, snap. All right, well, let me see if all the tests pass with my change. NPM test. Did see one failure. And we are almost at an hour and a half, so I'm going to need to break in a few minutes. I would love to get this in a working state with passing tests. It is retrying the failed tests. Looks like this one's kind of dead. Frame navigation test 88. Wow, that sounds familiar. Yeah, that is the test 
that I was running, I thought. Take a look. Oh, did I run the test? Or did I rebuild? I might not have rebuilt. Nope, I didn't. I built main, and I went back to my branch, and I ran test. Oops. Cancel. Stop. All right, let me run build and then test. No wonder it was failing. <laughs> Old code with new tests or new fixtures at least. Oh, still got a failure. What was that? Frame tests successfully following a link to a page without a matching frame shows an error. 158. Missing frame link. Interesting. If that is going to consistently fail. Frame tests. Yep, it's definitely failing. Is that the only one? 190 as well. Failing to follow a link on the page shows an error. error. Okay, so I broke something with the error handling, obviously. I wonder what that is. So we are, the only thing I added was we are setting the last rendered location in the case where we should not render. Which does feel a little odd, right? We didn't render and we're setting a rendered location. All right, let's see how many tests are failing. Oh, turbo history state after a reload. That one's also failing. Following a same origin download link. What I don't see in these results is why they're failing. I have to wait for the whole thing to finish. Skip programmatically fizzing across origin location falls back to window location. Hmm. All right, nine failed. That's not great. <laughs> uh, let's take a look at this one. Failing to follow a link to a page without matching frame shows an error and throws an exception. Expected undefined to exist. Assert exists error. Error equals undefined. Page wants page error. The response did not contain the expected. Uh, 
All right, so for some reason we did not get here. Throw frame missing error, which means we did not get here. Handle frame missing form response. That is interesting. Um, so if I go back to this test and I look at where are we starting, this test starts on frames that HTML, fixtures, frames, HTML. And what does it do? It clicks on missing page link. Missing page. Assuming that's what this is. Missing page link. Yep. Click. Throw frame missing error. The response did not contain the expected turbo frame idea will be ignored. Okay. Isn't that what we're checking for? The response 404 did not contain the expected turbo frame ID missing. The response 200. Okay, <laughs> that's quite different. The fetch response is a 200. Did I change something with that? I remember the very first thing I was looking at was fetch response, but I thought I undid that change. Fetch response loaded. Did I leave that in there? Await oh, fetch response response HTML. Yeah, that's still there. Ooh. What did I break? So if I look at the network tab, I see a missing and I see a 404. So why is it thinking it is a 200. Oh, now it's a 404. Hmm. Which one is it? Missing page or missing frame? Missing frame link. Now it says 200. The heck? Two hundred. The fetch response is not pointing at missing. Let me make sure that my test or my change is what caused this. So let me go back to session. Is it in session? Or was it in view? It's in view. If I comment this out and rebuild, and I refresh, missing frame. 
200. Okay, I'm confused now. If I go back to Oh, now I've got changes. Uh, let me just go back to main and rebuild. Missing frame. Is it 200? Okay, so what is wrong with this message? The response 200 does not contain. Well, yeah. Why is this failing? So this one says 200, okay. And this one says 404. What's the difference? Missing page link, missing frame link. Ah, oh, I hit the wrong button. Missing page link is the 404. Okay. Missing page. 404. All right, let me go back to my branch. Refresh, missing page to 404. Okay. So, what is wrong with this console? The response 404 did not contain the expected turbo frame ID missing, would be ignored. Perform a full page visit instead. Set turbo visit control to reload. That looks the same to me. So why is this test not working? Let me try running just this test. Do that with playwright test dash G. Hmm. Now it's passing. Failing to follow a link to a page without a matching frame. So there must have been another test higher up that affected this test. What else is in frame tests? We have 158 and 628. One fifty eight is hitting the missing frame link. What if I run this entire file? Copy, relative path. Uh, I need that tab I had open about playwright. Um, NPX playwright test. Path to test. Dying on 158. And 
Let me see if it doesn't die if I comment out that line. Do 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 do, do. And build. Mm. Interesting, it's still failing. The other thing I did change, now that I think about it, was I removed a line here. This used to be here. So maybe that's what broke it, not this. Let's see. Nope. Too flaky. 128 passed. Does that mean it retried and they worked? Retry one, it worked. Interesting. Hmm. Yeah, so what, what I'm wondering is whether there's other behavior that's not working when you don't have all your head tags. Because, I mean, if you look at what's in view, all this code is not running on the page view when the head, you know, tracked elements are don't match. So that's quite a bit. Um, it's, it's actually saying that they pat well, one failed, I guess, and one flaky. It's a little confusing. If I go back to main and I build. I run that set of tests. I get failures. Those tests seem kind of flaky to me. Yeah, definitely flaky, even in Maine. So I'm going to not look at those for now. What are the other test failures I had? Don't want frame tests. Oh. I lost it. Let's see, let's go back to my branch and run a build and run all the tests. Once again.
looking for that red. Where is the first red? Visit tests. Now these seem like a problem. because I did directly affect the location. We also have navigation tests. That's a problem. Well, visiting and navigating seem kind of similar. Possible request test. Oh, restoration test. I want to look at this one first. All right, seven failed. And the first one is this visit test 47. I'm gonna try running that. Dash G. I run that by itself, it still fails. Okay. Do, 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 do. What is this doing? URL before visit, visit location. So before each, we're going to visit.html. And then we are doing visit location about blank. So we're doing window.turbo.visit about blank, okay. And then checking the URL after the visit and making sure they're not equal. And it's saying that they are equal. Interesting. Window.turbo.visit. out blank. Uh, 
And then how do I know the URL? The URL looks like it is about blank. URL before visit. URL after visit. Hmm. I'm assuming that this is accurately telling me what the before visit and what the after visit are. But just to make sure, I'm going to log it. Thank you, Copilot. Yeah, that is interesting. It's like it's not actually going to about blank. Window.turbo.visit. About blank. Navigated to about blank. All right, let me try commenting out my change. And running the test again. All right, that's confusing. <laughs> um, let me go to main. Oh, did I build? I think I did. Maybe I didn't. Yeah, I guess I did. Let me go back to main. And build. And then run this again. Okay, they're failing in main. What the heck? That's weird. Hmm. Um, all right, what's next? <laughs> can I find something that I actually broke that I can demonstrate that I broke? Uh, da, da, da. Timeout. I don't like these timeout ones. Turbo history state after reload. Let's try that one. Passing, failing, failing, well that's not good, oh, I'm in my branch, let me go back to main, and build, and then run this test again, passing, failing. Failing. Okay, that's confusing. Why are these tests all failing in Maine? Am I missing something about these uh, package JSON build test?
Yeah, I don't know why it is failing in Maine. These tests. I can undo that now. Uh, let's see, navigation tests. Following the same origin link to a named anchor. Passing, failing. Passing in Chrome. Failing in Firefox. Well, I guess I could see if it's passing in Chrome. Yeah. Same problem. Huh. Well, I'm not sure if I broke anything or not. It's a little confusing to me. So I'm going to push this branch up and just create a PR anyway. It has been a while and I need to take a break. Let's see. This resolves issue 1241. Uh, let's see, that's the purpose. Approach. Set the location on the page view, page view delegate, right? Yeah, it's the page view delegate, which is a session. Set the location on the session, even if the page view does not render because the tracked elements are identical. It's false. Okay. Um. I should mention the test test that I used to prove this issue was which one? NPX playwright test. Promoted frame navigations are cached. I believe that's the one. I go back to main and I go to tabs three and remove this. I believe this test fails. Nope, maybe not. 
Did I get the wrong one? Um, tab two, tab three, and then back. This looks right. Oh, I never rebuilt from the Yeah, that's going to be a 30 second timeout. So I believe this is the test that illustrates the issue. Restores, I believe. Action restore. Need this. Does not team matching head. Track element is identical is based on the current head snapshot. Okay, there we go.